Welcome to today's AIA Custom Residential Architects Network presentation, Brand Building in the Era of the Empowered Client, How Online Storytelling Can Help Your Business. My name is Bud Dietrich, AIA, and I'm your moderator. Today's presentation is a preview of an AIA Convention half-day workshop in Denver on June 19, 2003. 2013, sorry. The AIA knowledge communities have several upcoming free webinars. You can learn more and register by visiting AIA KnowledgeNet's event calendar at network.aia.org. Today's presentation is copyright 2012 of the American Institute of Architects. You should have received a link to a PDF copy of the presentation in the reminder email. The link can also be found now in the chat box at the right-hand portion of your screen. Today's presentation will be available online after this live event. AIA Knowledge is a registered provider with the American Institute of Architects Continuing Education Systems. Today's presentation is worth one continuing education hour for licensed architects and one elective supplemental experience hour for interns enrolled in the intern development program. In order to receive credit, you will need to follow the link provided in the chat box at the conclusion of the live presentation. This link will also be provided in the follow-up email you will receive one hour after the conclusion of the webinar. Attendees must complete the form within 24 hours of the webinar. During today's presentation, a panel of architects will share how they efficiently and effectively manage their web presence to tell their story. Among other outcomes, attendees will understand how homeowners are using new mobile, local, and social tools like HOWS to collect information about residential architects. Joining me today are Liza Hausman, Vice President of Marketing at HOWS, an innovative community and platform for residential building, remodeling, and design. Liza, Liza's experience spans advertising, consulting, marketing, and social strategy for Fortune 500 brands from Clorox, AT&T, and Turner Networks to a host of innovative startups. Jane Frederick, FAAA, co-founder of Frederick & Frederick Architects based in Beaufort, South Carolina. Frederick & Frederick has been celebrated with numerous awards, including the Hilton Head Home Builders Lighthouse Award for Best Kitchen, Best Home for Metropolitan Magazine, and Best Renovation 2009 by Southern Living Magazine. Katrina Herman will be presenting for her colleague, Stuart Narofsky, AIA. Stuart is the principal of New York-based Narofsky Architecture, an award-winning multidiscipline design firm whose focus is custom homes. His many accolades include Architectural Digest Best Home and the 2011 Excellence in Architecture Archie Award. Katrina became fully immersed in the architecture and design field after joining Narofsky Architecture and Ways to Design in early 2007. Mark English AIA is located in San Francisco. Mark is the editor of two respected online magazines and along with co-editor and writer Rebecca Firestone has created a forum for the local architectural community with the architect's take. A second online publication, Green Compliance Plus, features residential energy compliance case studies and advice as well as serving as a portal for residential Title 24 services tailored for architects' clients. If you have any question at any point during the webinar, please enter it into the chat box and it will be sent to me, your moderator. All content-related questions will be answered at the end of the webinar as time permits. All technical questions will be entered as soon as possible. Our first presenter is Liza Hausman. Hausman. Welcome, Liza. Thanks, Ben. And uh, thanks, everybody, for having me today. Um, I'm excited to be here to give you the perspective that we've learned um, based on how homeowners and professionals like you are using HOWS. Um, your clients and prospective clients have new tools that are really changing their expectations about building, remodeling, and design. Um, these tools enable them to be more informed uh, and also more confident. HOWS in particular is changing and expanding the process by which homeowners find and choose professionals. Today I'm going to present the findings of HOUSE's annual HOUSE and Home Study. Uh, it was a study we did, a survey of homeowners using HOUSE that received over 30,000 responses. I'm also going to share real stories from homeowners and architects in our community and what you need to know to successfully market to and communicate with this new empowered client. So quickly let me share a brief background on HOUSE uh, so you can have a better idea of how we're collecting this data. 
houses a platform that connects homeowners with remodeling and design professionals. Uh, the company was founded by a husband and wife who were struggling to remodel their own home. And rather than set out to create a business, the couple really built houses as a side project to solve their own problem of finding and communicating with the right people for their project. Um, rather than uh, the five referrals they got from their realtor when they bought their home, there are now more than 800 architects uh, in just the San Francisco Bay Area alone on how that folks can choose from. And so they really didn't turn this project into a full-time business until more than a year later when it had become popular nationwide and really beyond their expectations. Uh, just a few examples here um, of the folks that are going to talk today and some of Narofsky's work. Frederick and Frederick. and Mark English. One of the unique features of Howes is that every photo featured comes from a professional in the community like you. Uh, you can see in the example here the link to the professional profile uh, and the photo note in the bottom right corner. So a little, back, a little background on, on the size of Howes and how we were able to collect so much data. Um, there are now more than 9 million unique users using uh, the website each month. Um, professionals like you have uploaded now more than 750,000 uh, images from their portfolios to house. And again, that's sort of the, a unique feature. The, the photos that you see on house aren't just gathered randomly across the web. They've all been uploaded by, um, by the owners. There are 3.2 million people who have downloaded the iPad and iPhone apps. And the app has an average of uh, 50,000 five-star reviews. To give you a sense of the volume of activity happening on house, um, professionals are uploading uh, more than 3,000 photos a day to their portfolios. And um, homeowners and other consumers are uploading more than, or not uploading, but adding more than 500,000 images on house to their idea books each day. So a little bit from our survey of you know, this empowered client, and, and what do they look like? What do they look like? What did we learn um, just demographically? Again, we had more than 30,000 responses, and we learned that 89% um, <coughs> of the users on house are homeowners. Um, the Hi, average, Liza, this, yes. Hi, Liza. This is Bud. Um, the, the audio is coming in and out, so um, hmm. maybe um, so I don't know what to do, but um, maybe something different. OK. Uh, is this any better? Yes. OK. I'm going to hold the microphone right by my mouth. So 89% of uh, the users on house are homeowners. The average value of the home, the median, is $400,000. Uh, and that's as compared to the national median, um, which is, I think, about uh, 75. Um, the average age of the user on house is 48. And the average uh, household income is 125000 again, uh, as compared to the national average, which is, I think, about 45. Um, only 27% of the homeowners on house are in their first home. So you have a lot of folks who are um, either professionals with young families uh, or older folks uh, in second homes. We asked folks what their plans were in the next two years. 72% are planning to decorate or redecorate. 40% said they're planning to build an addition or remodel in the next two years. Uh, and an amazing 10% said so they're planning to build a custom home in the next two years. We looked at some of the data regionally and some of the fun things that popped. Um, Minneapolis uh, was the city with the most activity for uh, remodeling and additions. 49% of the users in Minneapolis said they were planning to remodel or build an addition in the next two years. And 18% of the users in Houston are planning to build a custom home. We also asked folks, uh, what type of professionals they were planning to hire in the next two years, and 30% that they were planning to seek, uh, to use an architect, hire an architect in the next two years. I think the highest was general contractor at about 57%. We also asked folks, you know, did you stay on budget for your last uh, remodeling project? Um, and amazingly, 43% said they actually went over budget, and 18% said they had no budget, which are obviously the best clients to have. Um, uh, Folks with a higher household income uh, tended to go over budget, and also those who worked with a professional. 
Uh, and finally, the most surprising finding that came out of the study was really the motivations behind why people were taking on um, building remodeling and design projects. Uh, we really expected that in this economy, folks would say that they were focused on um, a return on investment. And instead, 86% uh, said uh, what was important was improving the look and feel, and 70% said improving the flow, layout, and functionality of their home. Uh, were important uh, for their next project, and only 47% said increase in home value. So it was nearly a, a two to one ratio, uh, showing that folks are really taking on these projects to please themselves, uh, and probably because they are less likely to kind of flip and move on to the next home soon, and so they're really investing to please themselves. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Jane at this point, and I'll be back in a few minutes. Thank you, Liza. Um, I'm Jane Frederick, and I'm a two-person firm, so it's really important for us to be able to um, spread our area of influence, and we found that the web is a really great place to do that. At the beginning of 2009, we worked with some marketing people, and they helped us sort of get focused, and the whole part of it is that, you know, you want everybody to get back to your web page and pick up the phone and call you or email you, and so um, in this pyramid, the web page and your blog is the most important. Um, social search so people can find you on the um, find your web page is very important, and then social networking is the the top of that. Uh, this just shows our Google Analytics page, so you can see that half the traffic to our web page um, comes from search engines such as um, Google or Yahoo. Um, about a quarter comes from referral traffic, and then a um, quarter comes from direct tra traffic. So on the um, search traffic, you want to be sure that, you know, on Google that you have your um, Google Maps, that you have a little photograph, you have a little, you have your web page, you have all your information there. Um, you know, when they click on it, that it's enticing and people want to come on to your web page. So spend a little time to, to make these um, referral, the search sites, referral sites have the information that you need. These are several referral sites that um, I see get people to my website. And on most of those, like the AIA Architect Finder, which you're, as an architect, uh, AIA member, you're automatically owned. But you need to go in and add a little bit of information. Because you can see on this site that you're there with your address, but it's a lot better if you go in and add your phone number, add your email, and add your website so that people can find you easier when they go um, to a search site, a referral site like this. And many of those on the screen that I showed you before, you can go in and add additional information such as your website and um, email links. So you want to be sure and do that. Um, if you look at the top here, these are the re um, referrals on our website, and you can see fully half of the referrals to our website come from house. So I mean, it's really um, the big gorilla that makes a, a, a huge difference. And what I did um, starting two or three years ago, especially when we were really slow, I spent the time to upload the um, photographs. And approaching it where you just do you know, one project a week or one project um, a day, it, it's not that onerous. But you want to, when you upload them, be sure and tag them because um, as Liza was saying, it is a searchable database. So you want people to be able to find, you know, porches, um, contemporary um, bathrooms, or you know, however they're they're um, looking at it. And the thing that I think that's most amazing is looking at your photographs and what we choose as architects to put on our um, website as you know the front page, the really sexy shots, and what the um, homeowners are picking is pretty amazing. This is the one um, that's been loaded to the most website or most idea books from our web, our house um, pictures. And last week it was 14,906. I looked yesterday and it was over 15,000. So, I mean, it's a back haul. I mean, it's a nice back haul, but it's a back haul. I mean, and that's, um, I think really fascinating to see what's really important to clients as opposed to what we think is important to. Um, just a little bit, people ask questions. Um, some of them, you know, I'm a two-person firm, so to balance the time it takes to answer the questions, if um, 
the answer is readily available. You know, I do it right away. If I don't know, I quite often say, you know, the files are in storage and I don't remember what, you know, the, the, the color of. You get a lot of what are the paint color questions and, you know, most people don't remember that off the top of their head. Um, and then the other thing that happens that's um, very helpful is that there's, um, Bud's one of the writers, but there's, oh, I don't, Liza will tell us later probably, but 20 or 30 um, regular contributor writers. And so then on your photographs, they show what the regular writers for House have said about your, your project too. And I can see that when I've had a project um, in a, idea bit in a focused idea book, the hits to my web page go up a lot. So that's another um, really helpful thing. And then also what I do, this shows um, that same house. They did a home tour of that house. And you have to, either for a home tour or when you just have one of your projects featured in an idea book, it's I take it and embed it on my web page. So I have on my web page a little section that shows, you know, the latest in house and it's always includes one of my projects. So that's um, really helpful too to, to move that back and forth. Um, this slide I think shows the most exciting part that's happened. Um, we specialize in hot humid climates and so the oranges are um, in the United States and the uh, North America, the hot humid climates. And we have gotten three projects in Texas and two of those we had um, signed contracts before we ever met them. I mean, they found us on house, called us, and we went to Texas. I mean, and so, and we've got one in um, South Alabama and one in the coastal plains of North Carolina. So, you know, we're two people on a barrier island off the coast of South Carolina, and this is the impact that, that we've had um, moving throughout the country. Uh, another thing is that um, writers troll house, I think, probably more than homeowners, it seems like. Um, but this is a, a garden project we did. Um, an editor at this old house called in a panic that she needed a, um, it photographed a project for their cover, you know, photographed next week. And so we were able to make that happen. Um, and then, so we were on the cover of the magazine. You know, they do a, um, put it on their um, web page, they tweet about it, then other people are starting to pick it up in other blogs. And so every th this has happened three or four times with different magazines that they find us on house and then they, they the, this whole cycle just keeps moving. So it, it's been very helpful to be able to, to spread our story um, to a wider um, audience. Liza? Thanks, Jane. Thank you very much, Jane. Um, okay. So uh, I want to go into now a little bit about what we've learned about where these empowered clients are getting their information. Um, obviously, we, serve, we surveyed house users, so it's not surprising that they're online, but it was interesting that 68% said that the primary source of information uh, that they would use for their next project was house and other online sources. Um, only 11% said that they were using magazines for information, and only 9% uh, said that they were turning to friends and family, vendors, service providers, or other folks um, through more traditional word of mouth. One of the things that we do um, often is take a look at what people are writing in the iTunes store for reviews, because it gives us great insight about what folks are really thinking. Um, I'll read you a couple. Uh, JP writes, we're starting the process of building a home, and the idea books have been invaluable from communicating what we want to our architect to picking colors and finishes with the designer. I'm sure we will use this tool through the completion of our project. And Sherry writes, browsing the web is so frustrating. This app solves that problem and more with the search feature, links to professionals, and products. The ability to save photos to my idea books has been helpful in helping me recognize my own style and make decisions. And so we analyze what's going on in here. What we hear is that um, visuals are empowering. People are happy to have more information. It makes them feel more confident. And we've actually heard from a lot of architects and builders that they've been able to um, 
offend folks who are afraid of getting started because they're afraid they won't be able to accurately describe what they want or they think they actually don't have a point of view, to actually help them uh, be able to articulate that visually. Um, actually, uh, Mark and I have talked about this before. You know, Somebody's idea of modern is not somebody else's idea of modern. Uh, two example rooms here, um, uh, which can kind of clearly show that you, know, you can have something that, that has a, uh, could both be called modern and, and both be similar and yet be completely different directionally in terms of what somebody is looking for. And so we really find that the visuals have been very empowering for homeowners. Um, to explain what idea books are, so you just have a little bit of background. Um, so on every photo, there's a link to a professional. There's also a, a button that says Add to Idea Book there on the bottom. And that enables homeowners to add photos to a collection, an unlimited collection of online folders. So where folks used to put pages out of magazines and put them in manila folders, they can now do that um, on house more easily, uh, make notes about them, um, name the idea books, whatever they like, and save them. They're also able to make them public or private and choose specific people to collaborate with. So if you're working with uh, multiple clients and you want to create and work with them collaboratively using idea books, you can actually set those idea books to private so that no one can see what work you're doing for others. And then you can invite those specific people to either just be able to see what you've collected for them or actually to work on it with you jointly and add their own photos or their own notes. Um, folks often create, uh, before they even have a first meeting, they ask homeowners to create a couple idea books, things they love, um, things they don't like, with notes about why, so they can start off uh, at a much uh, closer to a uh, more informed place uh, before they even start talking about what they want. So we've seen that folks are collecting a lot of photos in their idea books. Um, but what's really interesting is that they're actually collecting professionals along the way. Meet Cynthia. Cynthia has I think, more than 700 images in her idea book. And again, she was collecting ideas for what she wanted to do with her home and how she wanted to change her home. But when she was looking through those images, she quickly realized that she had collected a lot of images from some of the same professionals. And she realized one she particularly liked, uh, found out he was local, gave him a call, and hired him. And we're hearing these stories more and more that you know it really used to be that folks would collect all of their ideas, save up for their projects, and, and not really research professionals until they were ready to move forward. And what we're seeing more and more is that, that research process is starting much earlier because homeowners are able to uh, get exposure to very specific um, architects and other professionals very early in the process, even in just their kind of inspiration and, and design research phase. So in addition to being able to find professionals uh, by getting exposure to their work, um, and I think Jane started uh, to speak about this, uh, another way that homeowners are discovering professionals is through very specific keyword searches for expertise. Um, so you know, Jane's particular expertise is that hot and humid climate. Um, she's able to put that information on, on her work. Uh, in this case, the homeowner was looking for photos. Again, she was just in the research phase for um, her row house, so she did a search for photos for row house, and a lot of the photos that came up and that were tagged with keywords, uh, which you can do on house for every photo, you can enter about 100 different keywords, um, were tagged with row house, and she discovered uh, Ben Herzog and was able to contact him, go to his website, do a lot of due diligence, and really connect with somebody locally who specialized in something that she was looking for, so she has. Uh, another thing that we're seeing professionals do is um, take very deliberate uh, control over what they're showing in their portfolio to attract um, the right type of client. Um, this architect, uh, Wiley Gilliam, in Texas, uh, because he was in Dallas, most of the referral work that he was getting was very traditional, and he wanted to do much more modern work. And so he was very deliberate about putting only his modern work up on house. And he was able to successfully not only grow the amount of business he was getting, but um, switch the type of business he was doing to far more modern work. So when he was doing about 20% modern homes, he's now building about 80% modern homes.
Uh, another way that folks are discovering uh, professionals on house is in the professional directory. Uh, folks can go in. Um, it defaults to their particular metro area in a 50-mile radius, but they can go in uh, and search for architects specifically in their area. House is a technology company, not a media company, and so um, the order in which we present professionals is really based on the activity that benefits the greater community. So uh, how many photos you've uploaded, the quality of the photos, whether you have reviews, whether you've added keywords to your photos, um, whether you're answering questions, and, and all things that really help homeowners uh, get more educated. Uh, Jane referred to uh, being featured in articles. So uh, here's an article, for example, on eight great kitchen cabinet palettes. Um, you'll see that in this next slide. Sorry, folks, just waiting to advance. But for every photo that shows up uh, in a featured idea book, um, here we go, uh, you'll see that to the right of it uh, is a link to, that's jumping ahead. Uh, uh, to the right of it is a link to the professional uh, whose work is featured. So when Jane says she gets a lot of hits to her website, because these articles are published featuring uh, a photo from your portfolio with links to your portfolio so folks can actually click through there uh, and do more research. But it does show that um, folks aren't just looking at the photos, it's helping them discover professionals and driving traffic all the way through to the website. Uh, the fifth and kind of, I think, most exciting way that, that folks are getting exposure to prof professionals is in the community. Um, in this case, the homeowner saw this uh, lovely home and porch. Uh, and you know, posted a question saying, gosh, you know, I'm trying to do something similar to this, what should I do? And we actually followed back up with her and said, you know, what, what did you end up doing? And she said, well, we actually communicated directly with the architect. Uh, he was a good match because of his interest and knowledge of, uh, knowledge of sustainable and healthy design and construction, and that resulted in our engaging him to create a new house for us that will include a similarly styled porch and stone facade. So again, folks are really, they have a lot of questions. You know, I've, I've I'm a homeowner myself. I've been through two models. There's not a lot of good information out there to know what's involved and what things cost. And so people have a ton of questions. Um, and it can be time consuming to uh, respond to them in the community. But what you end up doing is putting a lot of educational material out there that um, people really appreciate. It makes them more comfortable in advance about working with you. And it makes them comfortable reaching out with their questions that can turn into work. I think Jane pretty much covered that uh, a lot of our writers and editors are looking for um, new work and new talent on house. So we've seen a lot of uh, a lot of magazines do that. So there's a little bit of delay in the system, so I'm just waiting for it to advance. Um, and then finally, I think one of the most interesting things we're seeing is just that the borders are coming down, even internationally. Um, we've had people be hired in Dubai. We've had a couple of projects in New Zealand. We had an architect in Seattle who um, was uh, contacted by a homeowner in Sydney who toured him around her house on Skype and introduced him to the builder and then flew him out there to work on the project. Um, folks that are working uh, even remotely um, uh, from Arizona to Greece. Uh, so it's uh, amazing to see that, that what homeowners are really looking for is exactly what they want. They, they, when they find what they want, they're willing to work with um, whoever is out there to get it, even if they're not necessarily um, super local. Katrina, I'll okay. hand it off to you. Thank you so much, Liza. Um, so we are Narofsky Architecture and Ways to Design. We are linked companies. Um, we've worked as collaborative firms since 2000, though we also commission independently. Um, we're approximately 10 employees, so we are a studio-style boutique firm, and our services align with such. The projects we work on are out-of-the-box items, definitely the focus is modern residential, and for years we have received our commissions via word of mouth only. <laughs> and only recently we realized the benefits of branching out in the social media communities to extend our range of projects. Um, this next project here, once that slide catches up, is in Arizona. It happened to be commissioned the old-fashioned way. Um, it's one of a few which we have had the good fortune to be able to build outside of New York. It's projects like these which allow for greater flexibility in design relative to function, which is thrilling for us as thinkers and creators. So 
the drive to get out there and market our product has really started to grow into something more than just business propelled. Um, we began our journey into the internet social media world with a blog, which failed. We did not have the time on hand to really dedicate to keeping that thing up and running. And, you know, people have such a short attention span for the internet that you must be newly present constantly in order to have, like, a real presence. So our firm is a little bit in contrast to uh, such a developed firm like um, Jane's. We're, we're a little bit back in time, I guess. We had a Facebook, but Facebook is not as successful as something like a house where people go knowing they're looking for something field related. So getting into house is great. It allowed us to get in touch with an expanded market from all over and it really allowed us to present our portfolio in an up-to-date fashion to a market of people we may never have connected with before. Um, okay, so we're uploading to house now. We're getting hundreds of hits. We are thinking this is great. Let's get more images up. Let's get feedback. And feedback besides commissions is what it's really all about at this point. Here in this slide, you can see we're posting green roof decks, like cool, amazing modern structures. And they're getting added to a few uh, idea books. But the biggest hits are coming to the bathrooms, to the landscapes. Um, we've got one house, which we considered sort of our transitional modern deco fusion house. And it's the most popular entry we have on house to this day, um, added to thousands of idea books. So this social media site is telling us how to advertise and how to appeal to the public. Then there are the complications of committing to a social media lifeline. Um, outside of the internet fantasy of getting known, and there is still tangible work on your desk, houses that are not going to build themselves. So you have to ration out your time. And if possible, it's best to have a committed member of the staff who will spend some hours each day making sure you are on top uh, of being the top hit, excuse me, on um, searches for architects and designers in your area. Um, Recently, we were featured on a house tour, which was great. We had tremendous feedback. Uh, this process of exposure to firms is the most accurate and the most beneficial because it introduces the consumer to our process. It's not just the pretty picture. You get text and lots of images to go along with it, which provide a full, actual, cohesive uh, project view. And it, you know, it just helps paint a more real picture of possible services and possibilities. And that's exciting for people to be able to see and touch and click around in. Um, the house tour helped as well because it looks very good for a prospective client to Google us and find that we are published on sites like House, Architectural Leaders Today, things like Dwell, names that they know, sites that they surf. It's good to see that the company you're interested in and working with is reputable and accessible. Accessibility shows well uh, through house when you answer the questions that, that pour into the inbox. Um, some of those questions are very good for business. They're asking, whose table is that? And we're saying, well, thanks for asking. That's our table. It's custom designed, custom built, and we can make one for you. Um, but then again, there's the questions that come in, and it's like, what shade of white paint is that on the walls? It, that can sort of find itself a bit tedious. Uh, with regard to design goals, really the feedback from the consumer and their questions are completely invaluable. They give us free market research with a fraction of the time investment that this information would have taken to collect five years ago. I mean, we can immediately start refining our uploads, tagging the paint colors preemptively, posting more bathroom projects, more landscape projects, tagging these images more heavily to give them every advantage to be easily searchable and to increase their presence in the consumer's idea book and in their search bars. Um, so moving forward, there is this curse that is reality television, and we have all suffered through it. The clients see how quickly and painlessly the renovation went, and they have what they think is a healthy understanding of the process. This creates very unrealistic expectations for us. And then you have the social media and entertainment markets, which are so saturated with content that the client comes out overwhelmed and confused. And that is actually a very big concern of these outlets. So. I think in using all of these great tools that are at our disposal, and not just how like there's tons of websites that do it, but as you can see, we're just sort of getting our feet wet in this area. It's just really important to stay focused and try to sort of keep it real with your clients and just making sure that you're doing this in the most organized way that you can and trying to help your clients to see that as well. Um, but there definitely is not much denying that this is the way that it's going. I mean, dedication to 
online social media networking is going to pull you through you know, all these next new commissions. So that's it. Thank you, Liza. Thanks, Katrina. So um, I'm going to wrap up a little bit with sort of our, our synthesis of, of how the world has changed um, based on what we're, what we're seeing in our community. Um, the first thing is the world is flat. Some of you may have read Thomas Friedman's book about globalization, but it really talks about how technology has brought down um, borders for doing business uh, that used to be very high. And as we're seeing, um, people are getting business uh, not just in their local market out of, out of their network, but um, out of state uh, or even out of the country. Uh, and that tools uh, are enabling folks to work remotely and asynchron asynchronously and in ways that are uh, much, much more efficient. Slide advance, hang on. The second is that clients are starting earlier than ever. Um, again, they're not just waiting until they're ready to move forward to research folks that they want to work with. They're really starting that due diligence early, even if they're not doing it consciously. A lot of the time, this is what's happening. They're getting exposed um, to not only your work, but who did it, um, the way that you answer questions, uh, your blog, your website. Uh, there's just a lot more because of this accessibility that allows them to start doing that exploration about who they want to work with and not just um, uh, what they want to do much earlier in the process. The third is the clients really want a 360 degree view of you. Um, it's not enough uh, to just get a word of mouth referral or it's not enough just for them to see your work. They really want to know much, much more about you. So when you answer questions in a community, there are a lot of folks who may not be asking questions but are reading that and are saying, is this someone I'd like to work with? Is this someone who appears to have expertise in a particular area that I want? Um, I, I'm not just, I like their work. Do they have reviews? Am I able to see what other people say about them? Um, and as Katrina said, this can result in a lot more work uh, for you to be sure that all this information is out there proactively because you don't know who's doing their due diligence. You may not know that for months and months. Um, at the same time, the benefit of this uh, for uh, professionals is that um, often it's shortening the sales cycle uh, and making the process easier. So when folks do finally contact you, they're much more knowledgeable about what you do. Uh, they know it's a fit for their vision. Um, they know they're going to be comfortable working with you. Um, we're seeing it cut the sales cycle and as much as half for many professionals um, and you know architects telling us again, like Jane said, folks that are hiring them, signing contracts without, without ever having an in-person meeting because they've been able to gather enough information to increase their comfort level. Um, and your brand really matters. Um, so kind of along the case study of, of the architect that wanted to do more modern work, you know, think about it's not just for Coca-Cola to say, you know, what is my public space? What do I want people out there to know about me? So you do really need to start thinking about those touch points, um, not just a must-have, but it really think about it as an opportunity to put out there uh, what you want uh, people to know about you and to be very um, deliberate and specific about it in a way that can help your business. And then test and repeat. Um, I think Jane showed how for every image that you upload to house, and you can obviously do this um, anywhere that you can, but we give you a count of the number of homeowner idea books that it's been added to. Uh, and this enables you to get a, an objective view of what work is actually resonating with um, the clients that you want to have. And, and like anyone, you get emotionally attached to particular projects. You might have loved the work or you really liked the client, um, but it's not always uh, the work that best represents you or is going to bring in the right type of client. Um, or it might even be a, a different angled shot. Um, it might be you know, a particular wide angle view of a room versus a close up um, or a more artsy angle that, that resonates better with homeowners. Um, and you know, think of it as a living, breathing thing that you can continue to do over time and really learn from. Before I hand this over to Mark, just a couple quick tips. Again, I think as everyone has said, it's about being discoverable, whether it's on house or anywhere else. You really want to start now and just enrich the content that you have out there over yourself, uh, about yourself over time. You know, add photos. Make sure you have keywords on there so when people are doing all of their searches for porches and 
um, particular uh, areas of expertise, they can find you in your work, um, interact with the homeowner community. I think um, it can be a big investment, and we're always trying to figure out ways to make it simpler. Um, but keep in mind that for every question you answer, you know, there may be 10 or 100 other people who read your answer that, that uh, um, are getting to know you that way. Do leverage that free market research to find out um, how your work resonates. And you know, ask clients and colleagues for reviews. We're hearing you know, over again, um, even just in our community, that uh, homeowners are hiring people uh, because they can get all this information and it's important to them that they can see that other people have hired you over and are happy with your work. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark. Uh, hi, this is Mark English. I've got a small uh, five-person uh, residential modern design firm in San Francisco. Um, whoops. Um, let me try to go back here. Here we go. Um, about five years ago, I started realizing, uh, I had built out this beautiful office in San Francisco, I started realizing that the world was changing a bit, and mostly because no one came to this office anymore. Um, I was very happy with it, but I found that my clients weren't coming here, and in fact, uh, the world had changed, and has obviously changed a lot more, besides the recession happening. Um, there's a lot more competition, less quality work for us. Our prospective clients are getting younger than us. And they are very tech savvy, and they have different uh, points of view, and they're extremely able uh, to do research. Our on online presence is judged by prospective clients, regardless of what we think. You know, our opinions are one thing, but our prospective clients have a different point of view quite often. The look, feel, and appearance of our website matters tremendously, and you'll see as I as I go through my concept of how this works, uh, everything comes back to the website and what that is about. And frankly, no one comes to our office anymore. Um, I had to ask myself, what do I want? Better projects, better clients. Increased professional standing and respect. Uh, like a lot of small architects, small firms, um, I'm lo I was looking for ways to find repeatable project types, usually with uh, custom homes. We do a custom home for a client. If they love us, they come back in 10 years for a country home. Other than that, it's all referral work, not so dependable. So obviously, increasing cash flow is a good thing. How to get there. Um, awards and publications. Um, I've had to teach myself to communicate better and, and be in and amongst the public and amongst my peers increasing in uh, position of our exposure in the world. Basically, the mantra is sharing equals power. In the past, it was hoarding information as power. It really is sharing information equals power. Um, this is the way I see the media world now. There's the old media, which is you know limited circulation. We all believe in awards, magazines, newspapers, books, and brochures. But there's everything else now below it. Uh, your own website, and in our case, a couple of blogs, which we'll talk about. And new media, which is scalable, which includes Twitter, Facebook, etc., but especially House. And, and I have to mention, I've been involved with House for almost four years now, and I've watched it grow and uh, has become the primary tool in my, um, you know, in my client procurement, procurement process. Um, the old media we're all familiar with, we've been published almost 100 times in books and magazines. Um, I can't say that I've ever gotten a, a project directly from um, that media. Uh, there are gatekeepers, of course, and architectural books are maybe 5,000 editions per. So um, I've become much more interested in the new media. Now, I want to point out a couple of things. Um, the Contemporist is a, is a modernist um, blog from the Netherlands, a couple has put together. When our project, um, the Fontana apartment, showed up on this website, we got more hits on our, our website than we typically got in a month. Um, that's great, but it's not dependable. Uh, what has happened with the House website is that we have between 20 and 40% of our traffic flow uh, is coming from House dependably every month. And I'll speak more about that in a little bit. 
if you're going to have anything to say, you need to have content. And obviously, some of that content can be borrowed. Some of it you produce yourself. We've written our own blogs, Rebecca and myself. And then we have guests, guests like Michael, a respected architect in town. Um, in the quest to develop repeatable business, we do Title 24 energy calculations, which I've done forever. And I decided to make that part of the business. We started with um, a newsletter, which we tried to email out. And that turned out to be uh, the, let's put it this way, it was the road to blogging because we realized that it's much easier to put a blog together that's adjustable and findable and, um, and is not uh, subject to all of the spam finding rules and so forth that inhibited uh, our communication with the newsletter. So we put together a green compliance blog. Um, and as well, I put together another blog, which is called The Architect's Take, which is really all about my new sense of sharing and communication with other architects. This was a, we interview other architects. We do, um, you know, we travel around the country and report on things that interest us, whatever that might be. Um, one of the goals in this new world is to be found through others. You write about who, who and what interests you. Other people will use that information and spread it for you promote links back to your website. Help others be discoverable. Uh, if you share power with them, they're going to share with you. These goals require the creation of content and distribution through the media. This is sort of how our uh, world looks. We have our website, which is a HTML5 site, so it works on iPads and so forth. We have the uh, Architects Take, which is our editorial WordPress blog. And we have uh, Green Compliance Plus, which is it really feeds, it has lots of information, but it also feeds people back to our Title 24 business. The idea about casting a net and bringing people back to your website from, from points that, where they don't even know about you is uh, illustrated here. So in the architect's take, if you saw Anne Foudron's um, Princeton Architectural Press book that just came out and looked her up on Google, you're going to find our little article ahead of almost everything else. If you read the article, decide to figure out who put this together, you are led back to our website. And again, if um, let's say you look up Clear Edge Power Fuel Cells because you're interested in fuel cells for residences, you'll see an interview that we did with the VP at the time. And again, led back to our website. Um, the other tools that are out there, like Twitter, uh, Facebook, LinkedIn, to me, this is all about focused broadcasting. It's not about 140 characters. That's irrelevant. This is about um, sending information through Hows, you know, found at Hows and your own blogs, uh, online, anywhere, to people who are interested in hearing what you have to say already because they've decided to. Uh, be linked in with you or friends, etc. These are our broadcasting tools. We, we probably all together have some kind of contact with up to 20,000 people a month. And this has led to all kinds of publishing and uh, traditional media as well. This is a snapshot through Google Analytics of uh, the moment that um, the Contemporist article came out. But you'll see Hal's is, was was number four then for us. Right now it's number one and has been for the last year. Um, uh, I have this question asked all the time. Isn't this all just a big waste of time? I could be doing, I could be working. <clears throat> um, this has always been a problem for architects. Uh, we're afraid of promotion. We're afraid of uh, interacting and selling. But this, this is the world we live in now. And I want to point out that in the last six months, we have three projects that have come directly from Howes. We have, uh, I have a project that we're in the midst of down the peninsula where I was interviewed, hired, um, on the phone one day, had a signed proposal back that same day, uh, having never met my client. But of course, she had done extensive research through Howes. She had collected the idea book images, decided she liked us. and. Um, had done her background information checks through Google, et cetera, and uh, was, came prepared to hire. We also um, won another project where the uh, client picked the top four architects in the order of 
Bay Area, Bay Area architects and reviewed them and picked us. So uh, unlike really any of the other media that I've worked with, this uh, the House website has provided direct employment. Uh, traffic to our website has increased at least threefold in the last nine months through all the methods that I was describing. And I've made lots of contacts with um, people in Met Metropolis, Met Metropolis Mag. Uh, residential architect. We were featured last year in the hard copy. That all came through contacts that came from this uh, sharing regimen. And we're still in business and doing our best work. Um, thank you. Thank you, Mark. Um, yeah. As a reminder um, to everybody, the audience, please, if you have a question, go ahead and enter it into the chat box and it will be sent to me. And um, we'll start with a few of the questions. Um, Liza, can you hear me okay? This is Bud. I can. I can, yes. Great. Um, we have a question about um, do all of the photographs need to be done by a professional or may just be a good composition, you know, using a digital camera? Um, you know, architects are concerned about spending the money, of course. Yep, it's a good question. So um, if you can get professional photography, that's great, um, but we do know that it's um, not necessarily affordable for everybody. Uh, we actually have some articles uh, published on how about how to stage and light and take photographs yourself. So if you uh, do have a good eye and a good camera, you absolutely can do that. Um, every photo that you upload as part of your portfolio will appear there. Um, what we do is actually go through and just check photo quality and note the best one. So if you want to be featured on the iPad or featured in the photo stream on how we're going through and just making sure that the photos uh, are a good quality visually and um, a minimum quality file size. And when you go to upload photos on house, uh, you can see right there kind of what the recommended file size is uh, to be featured. The other thing that we've heard from folks is that they'll go to um, design schools or photography schools and find students that are trying to build their portfolios and can get some great photography there. Uh, or often there are some folks that do real estate photography that um, that are that are pretty good and can help as well. Yeah, that's a that's a great tip. tip. Photography school and, and there, you know, you can help them build a portfolio and you can um, hopefully get some decent, some uh, really nice photographs done. Um, you know, at a, at a decent, uh, reasonable price. Um, I, d I do have to say, I mean, one of the the more interesting things about my experience on houses. Um, Probably the worst photograph that I have on house is by far and away the most popular. It's uh, it's it's in over 9,000 idea books, and it's a photograph I took uh, of myself, and and it, it taught me the lesson that um, if the photograph tells a story and and the story is a good story, uh, you know, good quality photographs, um, you know, uh, not the most important thing. I mean, it's really important, but not the most important thing. It's telling that good story is the important. Thing. Again, that was my experience. And I, I, did you see that? Go ahead. So I was going to say, I see someone was sort of asking about uh, if you can add renderings to house. I was just going to add on to that, that when you go to upload photos, you'll see options to choose, is this a room space? Is this a product? Is this a rendering? Is this a before photo? So all of those are, are things that you can upload. Um, just want to designate them correctly. You, you know, we have a, a another group of questions that have to do with um, sort of the, you know, how you select a style or, or a, a location for the photographs you're uploading and, and whether there's um, any intention that how is to sort of expand the style categories and you know, expand the universe of locations to, to include some cities or lo you know, areas that are not, not there currently. Yep, so the, the good thing to know about um, that is there are two things. So one in terms of styles, it's much more important that you add those uh, those style words to the keywords for each photo. Um, folks are, are more often just doing specific searches uh, and less often just kind of browsing through modern. So um, you're actually, if you're putting, you know, cottage style or some style that isn't designated necessarily in the drop down on house, your work actually is being found as long as you're adding those keywords to your photos. Um, and then the second piece in terms of metro area, so it actually doesn't even matter. The, the metro areas are kind of a, a, a popular, uh, a list of sort of popular areas. Um, but there are folks, plenty of folks on house outside of those specific areas. And um, what we actually do is default 
um, for every user on house to their own uh, metro area based on IP address. So even most books aren't actually kind of going to a specific metro area by default. When you go, for example, to the professional directory, you will automatically see folks within a 50-mile radius of wherever you are, regardless of where that is. Thanks, Lisa. You know, this is a question um, for the architects, and um, question I'll, I'll ask um, Katrina. You can help answer this. Um, question manages the house content for the firms. You know, the marketing or project 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 manager, or who's best um, who's best to do that? I mean, how do you guys handle it over at Morops? Um, interns. <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Old Stuart actually um, usually will come up to one of us and he'll be like, I took these great shots of this project today. Somebody's got to get it up online. And whoever is not on the phone will just take that and, and put it up. And um, actually, I saw a question, like, how do you really, I mean, how do you streamline it? How do you streamline it? I mean, there's so many different outlets and so many different places to put this information up. You know, for us, I don't know how to really organize that and how to get it all um, communicative to all the different places. But uh, definitely all of us in the office will jump on it at any point in time you know, to upload. And, and so that actually is probably part of the problem as far as how we're not streamlined in getting that info uh, up on the internet. You know, this is um, this webinar is actually a, a, a small piece of a workshop that we're planning for next year's um, AIA convention in Denver, and, and part of that workshop will will be a um, a lengthy discussion about how to how to streamline. We'll we'll talk about tools that you can use to streamline sort of and integrate a lot of the social media platforms. Um, you know, hopefully um, before the workshop that uh, next year's convention, we'll put on a webinar to sort of start addressing those things. Because I mean, I know. Architects in general, me, me in particular. I mean, I know that those are, you know, sort of getting those efficiencies um, going is is important. Hey, Mark, how do, how do you guys handle, you know, getting your content up online? Um, I I handle all of that. I think I find that, uh, you know, we probably photograph a new project every five or six months. You know, sometimes they come in batches, and then I'll typically spend one one uh, lunch period a week uh, doing this stuff either. You know, answering questions and/or uploading photos while I'm doing something else. The upload process is no big deal. Um, the great thing about House is that it's uh, relaxed in a way, as opposed to my HTML site, which I'm very fussy about. So I can put things up and look at them, and if I don't like them, I take them down and put other, you know, photos in their place. Um, I find it uh, easy to work in parallel while either answering questions or uploading photos to the house site. Um, so I've, I've not found that to be um, much of a um, much of a energy or time draw at all. The, uh, the blogging takes a little more time. And, and Jane, how about, how about uh, Frederick and Frederick? How do you guys handle the, you know, answering the questions and, you know, keeping the content up to date? Jane? Well, I guess we'll, we'll just we'll, we'll go on to... Um... Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, I do it all. We're just two people, so, um, but like Mark, you know, we photograph when a project's done, so it, you know, several times a year, um, and likewise in batches. Um, I tend to do just a little bit every morning when I come in. I just take a look at you know, um, questions that have come in and answer them then um, so they don't pile up too much is pretty much how I, I answer that part. Um, hey, Liza, a couple of questions are about whether or not the post uh, charges are a fee to be on house. Yep, no fee. House is free. Um, and I see another question about um, architects living and working outside the U.S. Welcome at House. Absolutely. We definitely have folks all over the world with a presence. Um, doesn't matter where you are. Um, maybe you can throw out, the, I think the IP question is sort of interesting. Maybe you can throw that out to the group. But. Which question is that now, Lisa? Uh, oh. the, yeah. Sorry? About, oh, about if, you, if you have in your your photos up there, people can steal your ideas, I guess. And I 
would agree with what Mark said that sharing is is really important. But another thing too is we tend not to put our plans online so that people get a sense of the spaces, but they don't have uh, you know all the information. Yeah, I would. This is Mark. Um, the The question about uh, hoarding information it, it's there are no um, secret ideas out there in the design world, and I think that um, this is sort of a leftover idea of of times past. In this world, we're filled with imagery imagery from everything, and it can show up in people's Facebook accounts. You know, the inside of the house that you're trying to conceal could show up in someone's Facebook account and be seen there. So I think that uh, as professionals, it's a healthier attitude these days to uh, assume um, within the bounds of privacy for your clients, obviously, uh, sharing the information is a good thing. Well, thanks for, thank you for joining us. Um, this concludes the AIA CES course, CRAN 12010, and the, the webinar survey report form URL is listed in the chat box and will be included in the follow-up email sent to you in the next few hours. You, uh, we'll be reporting credit for attendees. Um, um, make sure to take the webinar survey um, report form in the next 24 hours, and you'll be able to fill out and download a certificate. Um, um, and we appreciate your feedback. So even if you don't need the continuing edu education credit, please take a moment to complete the survey. Thanks for joining us.